Welcome to episode 40 of Meet the Game. My name is Rolf Steinort and I'm recording this from Bremen, northern Germany. So you have seen it's uh, not so easy to look uh, friendly and photogenic and hold the camera on your long arm trying uh, to avoid the strange glances of people who think why is he looking into his own camera and talking while the, that and that in English. Okay, and uh, with this all me, around me, I forgot uh, to tell what I wanted to tell. Um, the slideshow is not on today because <laughs> there are 120 images in uh, the competition and uh, I have to download them uh, <laughs> each one. There is no possibility to do a bulk download and uh, then combine them to a slideshow and I simply hadn't the time to do that. But if I have prepared here the list of participants and uh, you'll see just now how I get the random number. And here it starts with T. Jacobs with number zero, goes down 16 rows until here, 42, this one doesn't count, 43, 44, to 48 and well we have 50 people on the list 49 without me and that's uh, 0 to 48 and now for getting the random number you see here in front of me the tracks of our tram and any minute now there will be a tram coming down from there and uh, that number of the carriage uh, will be our random number. It is approaching. There you can see... There it is. And here it is. Let me walk over to it and look for the number. It It's 3033. 30, 3, the tension grows and let me calculate who has won. The magic number of the streetcar was 3033 and that mod and we had uh, 49 participants and where is my equal sign? There. Number 44. Who has number 44? Must be on the bottom here. It's Eiswin. And, well, I will uh, won't mail you uh, this until next week so that, that you can see this here and have the surprise in the, uh, in the podcast. And congratulations, you'll get a one-year membership plus membership at 23. And I'll ask the 23 guys if I get some more codes. These uh, were the codes that I could use. And uh, if somebody of you has an idea what I can give away that um, has no additional cost with, uh, well, sending something out or so, um, well... Just drop me a note uh, or uh, get some people to give me stuff to give away. I think it's, it is fun. The next segment of the show today is especially for Norman and uh, for the rest too. You are allowed to look. Um, I discussed two things in some of the last podcast. One thing was filter and uh, distorts and uh, lens distortion where you could uh, change uh, some aspects of the lens like barrel or uh, pin ca or cushion distortion and uh, some other uh, stuff here, vignetting and so on. And the other thing was uh, the perspective tool where you could uh, uh, change falling lines in an image. You remember this perhaps. And 
Well, during the, the discussion uh, on uh, 23 or in the comments, I don't recall at the moment, Norman, uh, well, doubted a bit that uh, this here has nothing to do with the lands. And now I want to show you that the falling lines are no fault of the lands, but simple physics. And now let's talk about perspective and perspective distortion. Sorry, I should have brought a tripod. Well, you have to cope with this. You see here the tracks of uh, our tram with wide angle. And you see they run together in the distance. Well, uh, they have perfectly the same distance uh, there in, in the background as here. You all know yet that. And you all think nothing is unusual with this. It's perfectly normal because we look in an angle out into the field and uh, when you look with this angle, in this case a slightly wide angle, you see more with every step you go out. People get smaller in the background. There's even high houses in the background that fit perfectly in the screen where uh, a man uh, which will uh, hope just now run into the picture is now bigger than the, uh, the houses in the background. So this is perfectly normal. The farther away something is, the smaller it appears on our screen here. And I can reduce this effect when I uh, reduce the angle of view and that I can do by zooming in. Now I've zoomed in as far as possible and you see the effect is still there but uh, well it looks a bit like everything has been uh, oh there's the next tram I choose the right track uh, the track where I face the tram and not where it runs up behind me so you see this tram is uh, really shortened by the lens now and if I zoom out you see this effect is still there if I would now zoom into the image again uh, with Cinelera you would see a lot of pixels but a very short tram. This is what you have seen here is simply a question of the point of view. Here I am and all the angles from here are staying the same and uh, the, the perspective is staying the same. I can only change the amount of field you can see with, uh, with the lens with my zoom here. And now let's look at uh, this statue over there, the Roland. Roland is uh, the symbol of uh, the freedom of our city here. Uh, if he would be depicted today, um, I think they would have left the sword away and uh, have him had his mingle f middle finger put up into the air. Uh, because um, if I turn around now, just where he looks, there you see the steps of our main church here, of our cathedral. And this was uh, the cathedral of our bishop and the bishop was ruler of the city in the times where the first Roland was built and uh, well uh, from this point on where uh, the government got over to the citizens not to the citizens but to the merchants uh, they uh, um, put the statue up and uh, showed him w what, <laughs> what they thought of him so uh, you see this Roland has perfectly normal um, proportions and now I'll walk up to him and you see perhaps that I get a little bit of falling lines when I get nearer and nearer and I have the camera up now now I'm just I'm standing just in front of the Roland and you see heavy falling lines. But what's behind the Roland now? It's the sky. It has been the houses. Let's look at his knees and look behind it. There are the houses. 
And here are his feet. You so see his feet and uh, his legs. Perfectly normal, no distortion. But when I go up, he distorts more and more. And so, well, this is logical too. I'm just in front of his feet now, and his belt buckle is about uh, two meters above me, and his face, uh, let's say, about uh, four meters above me. And so the distances are longer. My field of view is farther, is wider, at his nose as at his belt buckle. And so his nose takes far less part of the image than uh, uh, the belt buckle. And this is simply geometrics. Uh, the falling lines are no fault of the lens. You can't avoid them uh, with uh, a construction where the lens sits parallel to uh, the, the sensor of the film. You, the only thing you can do is uh, get directly in front of your image. Have your image plane, the plane of uh, the stuff you want to depict, parallel to your sensor plane. Let me clear up the blunder I made in the last episode. Um, I had a problem with my uh, layer mask for the midtones. So here is uh, my black and white image. Oh, a typo. And I want to have uh, three layer masks here, yes, three layers. One uh, which contains all the dark parts of the image, this here, this here. One with the midtones, let's say this here, this stuff here, this. And one with the highlights, this metal here, this area here. And for that I need these layer masks. These layer masks are uh, grayscale copies of uh, this image here basically the same image. And now let's look how they work. I have added a black layer below uh, these things here uh, just to see what we can see in this image here. And here are basically the highlights. Because a white part in the layer mask reveals the layer. White reveals, black conceals and the black parts are vanishing because they are um, dimmed down by the layer mask. Okay, now let me get this a little bit more uh, a little bit better. I take my curves tool and I just increase the contrast here a bit getting the dark parts darker and the highlights lighter. So this is my highlight layer. I switch this off and now I tackle the dark parts. And here you see the dark parts are invisible. Perhaps I should uh, switch this here uh, to white now. So, okay, you see here, the dark parts, they aren't really dark here, you see the highlights. And I go here to my uh, layer mask, and now I have uh, two choices, either the curves tool, or I can go to colors invert. Let me do this here, and now you see here, let me switch this on and off, you see the dark parts of the image. I have inverted the layer mask and you see the dark parts here. Switch this back on and uh, the dark parts are now in this layer mask white and they reveal what's behind them. And uh, let me undo this um, and i show you another way uh, to do this. I just use the Curves tool 
and I pull this side down, this side up, and use basically the same curve but inverted as I had used in the highlights. So I think this should work. I'll uh, switch off the white layer. Well, that's okay. These are the dark parts that are visible and this stuff, the highlights are transparent. And now I click on OK. So, and now the midtones. I start again with my curves tool and I add the curve up here in the highlights and here in the dark tones. But I don't want to include the highlights and the dark tones in my uh, layer mask here, in my layer. So I have to pull these two sides down. Everything is invisible. But now I pull the midtones up. And now you see here the stuff that isn't really highlight and isn't really dark comes out. And now let's uh, look at, well, perhaps I should press OK here now. Now let's look at uh, the combination of these layers here. And you see, you have nearly the whole image. There's a little bit, I'm switching on and off the white layer here, there's a little bit transparency still in it, but now I have here the light, the midtones, and the dark part of the image separated in three layers. And now I delete my white between layer here. David Goas had a tip for me for uh, filling uh, the areas here with color, for colorizing the, uh, each layer. In the last episode I had, it, I had added a layer and colorized that and merged that down to here. And he showed me a different way. I select the color I had a bluish one here. Let's uh, select the foreground color. Blue for the background here, for the dark tones. And now I change to the bucket tool here and say opacity 100%. I want to fill with uh, my foreground color and the whole area should be filled. Nothing more here. To uh, do, and I change here the mode to overlay. And now I just use the bucket tool to fill. Let me check if I'm the right layer. Yes, I am, and I'm working on the image, not on the layer mask. And now I'm just filling this up, and it works. Go to the next one, select the next color. I had a red for that. So, and click midtones in red. And I go to the yellow and select the top layer, the layer for the lights. Click on it. And here is the yellow. Please send me some comments, either as a mail at info at meetthegimp.org or just post a comment to this show entry in meetthegimp.org. And please tell me if I shall include something about photography in the show, like, uh, well, perhaps a little bit more complicated or about sh how to shoot something, or if I should keep strict to the screencast about uh, photo uh, photography and GIMP. So, uh, there is one thing I want to ask you. Um, there is a 
graphics meeting, Libre graphics meeting, uh, where I, which I hadn't known before. I think if I had known about it uh, some month ago, I would have gone there. But uh, now it's a little bit too late for, for me to do the, all the planning for that. And uh, the link for that is on the show notes here and on the blog, meetthegimp.org. And uh, if you want to go there, it's fine. But if you want to help GIMP and uh, the free software with graphics, then please consider to donate something for their work. They need to fly in uh, people from all over the world. And uh, you can think about it. Uh, most uh, uh, developers for uh, open source don't have the money to uh, go from, let's say, America to, to Poland uh, or uh, Asia to Poland without help from the outside. So I think this was it really for this week. I had fun uh, doing this outside stuff and perhaps there will be more. And next week you will be in for a surprise. Goodbye. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com.